Hey, hey guys, welcome to another one of my vlogs. Vlogs? 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 Um, I'm telling you guys about my apartment being haunted and about ghosties because my house has been apart, been uh, haunted for the last year. Um, uh, year or two years. Um, and, uh, yeah. Exciting stuff. I know a lot of people have been wanting to hear about it on my Twitter because I've been complaining about it for about a year. Um, wow, where do I begin with this? Because it's a lot. Uh, so, a, a quick story about me and what I believe in and all that. I, I also, I want to apologize beforehand if... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going back and forth trying to get just the lighting. If you see anything weird on the screen or in the audio, I apologize beforehand. Um, the ghosts have, that have been bothering me have been left out of the apartment. But if you see weird shit, I apologize. But, um, so if you want to know a little bit more about me, I'm atheist, or I was atheist. And I hardcore did not believe in ghosts, like, at all. Uh, just didn't. Um... And I have heard it all. I, 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 you know, I've said this to other people. I, I just don't believe in God. It didn't make any sense to me. Logical sense to me. And I didn't believe in ghosts. So I was pretty hardcore with this. Um, but when I was a little kid, I was very, very, very religious. I was a very religious person. Um, and then I grew up, and then I just thought it's not really for me. Um, and I grew up with ghosts. My house growing up was haunted. Uh, and very haunted but then when I left the house I just thought oh you know I was young I was a young child you know you have imagination when you're a kid so then I kind of just ignored it when I went to New York City and I didn't really deal with any ghosts again uh, ever until I went here to Austin and then I was dealing with like a haunting here in the apartment and it was pretty spooky and for those people who probably already know it from my Twitter is that like at night they would do things like um, they would move my bed, they would move furniture or objects, they would like shift it. Like one of them was the cardboard cut out, they would just shift her. Um, uh, they would like move the fan, they would move, they would, they would move like they would just move objects, and it was uh, like constant for like every single night. Or I'd be laying in bed and shake the bed, and then. It just, that sort of thing kept happening over and over again. Everybody kept saying the same thing, and I believe it myself. You know, you're trying to sleep, you know, imagination takes the best of you, and all that jazz. So, um, it's like, and so I was like, well, I don't know what to do because, like, I, I mean, they're probably right. It was probably just in my head or whatever. But then it got to a point to where it was so bad, it was when I was so terrible. That and what, and then I heard someone say help to me, that I was like, oh my god, I was like, I guess I'm, I'm just gonna have to contact the psychic, because they were doing things like, like I think the, the scariest thing I witnessed, there was two things, is one was I was sitting here, and then I heard an explosion in my living room, and I thought Gigi got out, I thought Gigi got out, and uh, or someone would like broke into my apartment, and uh, exploded it. And so, I was like, oh, shit. I thought, well, that was probably just Gigi. So I, I, I opened the door, walked out, and there was just food and trash everywhere. They just, like, the um, recycling bag was just destroyed, and there was just stuff everywhere. Uh, another scary moment was, like, I was laying in bed, and I had woken up. And there was a woman standing at the foot of the bed, and she walked forward at me. That scared the shit out of me. But again, I was like... Probably just imagining it. Um, and I thought, oh, well, they are spirits. They're not, like, bad spirits. So, who cares? Um, but then, finally, after that one night of it being really bad, I was like, okay. I'm just gonna get this, like, can I keep hearing noises? Okay. Um, and, uh... Sorry, that, that took me off, off track. But... Yeah, so that all happened. We called the psychic in. The psychic came in. And then uh, she was like, it was said it was a trickster ghost. That was the one that was doing all the moving on the furniture. And he was told to leave. 
Um, he was told to leave because he was being a trickster. So he's gone now. He's not allowed in the apartment anymore. And then the ghost that needed help, her name is Amanda. Uh, and she apparently was with me for a very long time. She like followed me around for a very, very long time. And she asked me for permission for her to uh, leave and go to the uh, afterlife. And I said, well, yeah. Uh, I want her to be happy. So uh, it was just, it was a weird feeling because, again, I'm, I'm used to ghosts, so I'm used to auras or energies, feeling them. And I had felt her since uh, the day I was born. So when she left, I felt like a, a absence from my life. But it was very strange. It was very sad. Even though I never met her, she hasn't even visited me in, in any of my dreams because I, I get lots of weird dreams. And, but I was like, oh, I feel like this presence is now gone. Because apparently she didn't know how to visit us. Like, because uh, while during the hauntings were happening, I was getting a whole bunch of weird dreams of spirits visiting me. So I was like, well, these have to be the spirits haunting my room. And also, I would be woken up by people talking to me, people yelling at me. It, it's such a weird stuff. And, um, so those, those two were handled. And then, um... Then I have a, a, a ghost girl that's been following me for a very long time named Nikki. Um, she's been following me for a very, very long time, and she's good now. Um, we got her a gift. We gave her a gift bear. Um, and I actually wrote... Okay, because one of the other things that the psychic told me was that I could do think, something called Aster writing, which is basically... And I, I was like, how the hell do you do this? It's how you just, you write, and you write the stories of ghosts. You can communicate with spirits through writing. And I was like, how do you do that? And there, she said, I could do it because I'm a scribe, apparently. I was like, a, I just am a spirit scribe, so I can just write. Which is why I like writing. Um, and so after she left, there's a lot more that happened now besides that, but I'm not going to disclose everything. I didn't get consent from the spirits to talk about this stuff because I felt weird just saying I know people probably don't believe the spirits who are watching this and uh, that's completely understandable it really is because this stuff just looks nuts to most people I'm just used to it so if you don't believe it's fine I'm not gonna like it's the whatever um, but uh, I felt the need to get consent from them anyway so I did uh, and so they said it was fine I could talk about it um, so I tried to ask her right because I was like, that sounds awesome. Let's be fair. Uh, to be able to talk to dead people through writing sounds kind of amazing. So I looked at how to do it. Uh, and it sounded really complicated. Basically, like, you empty your mind, you put your mind to the side, and then you just write how you would a story of whatever comes to mind. It's, like, hard to explain. I don't know how to explain it very well. And I said, okay, I'll try. And um, I, th the first time I did it, it was really choppy, and I was like, I don't know what I'm writing. I feel like I'm writing, like, junk that isn't the actually accurate, um, because sometimes the images you get or the names you get are inaccurate if you're not, like, a strong psychic or whatever. So I was like, I feel like this is all wrong. But then we were trying to talk to, who were we all talking to? We are just talking to spirits. We were just like, what's up? What's going on? I was just like writing to them to see what all I would get, like what stories I would get. Um, and then while, while I was doing that, uh, I have, now these guardians have, I have seen before, back when I really believed this, because I used to be very spiritual. I used to, used to really believe in spiritual stuff uh, back in the day. This is before I was just straight up atheist. Uh, I was really into spirits, like when I was like, a teenager I was like I thought that stuff was really cool I had like Wiccan friends and you know it was really you know I, I went to Hot Topic but I was a psychic you know I was you know I was into it and um, um like the archangels I saw during that time were Michael and Gabriel Michael is the head spirit guy he's the strongest guy so he everybody everybody can see these archangels by the way at, at any time any information I give to you now in this video, anybody can actually access. Uh, I'm not like special or something. Uh, like anybody can talk to anybody. Um, so the Michael I had seen before and I had seen Gabriel before. Um, I had never seen Raphael, but, I, but he's supposed to go with them. He's supposed to be like 
uh, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael go, and the three of them will go. If they have like a, a thing they need to do, like a big thing they need to do. Um, so, but uh, so the two of them choose Gabriel and Michael. Um, and through my, how do I describe this? It's been a weird week, guys. I don't know how to describe it. Um, in a way that doesn't sound funky and phony to like people that are watching this. Because I already know I sound cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So, I'm trying to think of a way of saying this without sounding cuckoo, sound cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, basically. I guess through my journey of a week, um, I have learned a lot. And I have learned that journey. See, even that sounds kind of like funky. Um, that Gabriel is my main, not my main, I don't want to describe it. He's the archangel I see the most and more clearly because I'm a writer and he's a writer. Because he's a writing archangel, I'm a writer. So he's my main guy that I see and, and reference a lot. So when it comes to astral plane writing, he's the easiest to talk to, if that makes sense. Because he's the actual writer. Like, he's the messenger of God. So, of God. I know, I know. Messenger of God. So, he can easily write. Like, whatever he needs to write. And it's easy to talk to him. Compared to other, other spirits. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to write this. Because I... Because I, when I wrote the hymn, he had a lot to say. So, I, I, would, I would write it all down. He had a lot to say to me. Um, but he warned me, how do I, how do I say this? Because if I say the, if I say the words, I spoke to Gabriel or Gabriel spoke to me, to very religious people and even like, com like just people who believe in other religions will hear that and immediately go, think, I don't know. And his words, as he puts it, he warned me against saying a message from him or like the plane, because I'm not like religious. Uh, I'm not very religious. I'm not like a nun. I'm not a priest. I'm not. I'm not a pope. I'm not. I'm not really anything. I'm just some Joe, Josh Joe off the street. Uh, so once you say things like I talk to the, the gods, then uh, you look like a real false. You just look like a false prophet, or you look like someone who thinks they're special, or you think you're pompous, or you think you're important. You think you're on a pedestal if you say, oh, I've talked to the gods. So that's a thing that he warned me about. So I don't really want to say everything that they've said because it's like, it does make me seem like I'm really important. But it's just something that I have learned through the hauntings so and what I was told through the psychic. Because the psychic came up and told us a bunch of information. So this is information I have learned from the psychic and from the hauntings and all that. So, and, and again, anybody can actually access Gabriel or any of the archangels. So you can contact them at any time. You can actually look it up online. Uh, if you look it up online, they'll tell you like ways of like getting in contact with whoever you want to get in contact with. If they're ready to present themselves to you. Or like you may not see them because it's like... I don't know how to explain it. It, it. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like you have your own journey and way of, of meeting the arch whatever archangel you want to talk to, or any any spirit, or any or any religion, anybody you should believe in. You you can figure out what to talk to them. Um, but one thing I guess it's because like I was also going. I wrote down Nikki's story, the little girl story, and how she died. I actually wrote it down. Um, and I was going to read it today in her words, but I'm wondering if that's too scary. Because that might really freak people out if they if I just read her story. Because hers is just a ghost story. It's not like a message from God. It's just her, how she died. And about her life. But I did not thought about it and I was like, I don't know, it seems scary. Um, but I can read it. And we got her, we did give her a gift. Because when she was alive... She had a little teddy bear named Teddy. So we got her a teddy bear and we put it on the couch. And it's there. So she can, so she feels like she, like more at home here. Cause she's never, the, the psychic said that Nikki is never gonna pass, really gonna pass. She likes, just likes being here. And she likes to follow us. 
So she's just always going to be around. So we figured we would give her a gift to make her feel like she's home. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like a, a piece of a thing in an area so she feels like this is also her house or something. Um, so we did that. But I'm just not sure if I uh, wanted to read that. And I thought about what I was going to say to everybody based off of this new information that I've learned. Because it was a lot. But then I was like, well, I don't want people to think I'm, I'm an asshole. Or I don't want people to think I'm crazy or something. So I wasn't quite sure what to say. And I still don't really know what to say. And I kind of knew I, I wasn't going to know what to say when I actually sat down here. Um, because, I mean, I would just roll my eyes at myself if I heard myself talking. Um, but I guess what I chose to say out of the information that I have learned... is that there are there are sins in our lives that or there are bad things in our lives that aren't quite as bad as they are made out to be and so this message more so goes out towards goes out to people who are gay or in the lgbt community who feel like they are being separated from spirituality spirit being spiritual like they can't they feel trapped and like they can't go out to people who they trust. Like if let's say they go to church, they feel like they've been chastised from shirts for being gay. Or even if you're alien, uh, atheist, you feel like you're being chastised by other people who go to church or people of different religions, of all religions. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be of the Christian religion or Catholic or whatever. It could be, it could just, all religions, LGBT people and transgender people or whoever feel chastised for and feel like they're not accepted for being the way they are. And I guess my, what I would like to say to them and what I've learned is that, how do I word this? Is that a lot of people feel as though they think they understand the world and the spirituality <clears throat> more than you. Let me drink. Like they're telling you, oh, you're gay, so you're going to be damned because they think they know more than you or that they have a higher power than you so they have the right to tell you that you're being damned or whatever. But that's not really true. And so it's, it's like, don't listen to people in your lives that come up to you and try to take away your happiness or try to tell you this is going to happen to you in your life because you're gay or transgender. It's like, don't listen to people like that because they're not, a, they don't, they're not higher than you, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm really trying to say this the words that make sense. They're not higher than you. And so they don't have the right to damn you. Or to kick you out of the house or whatever. They don't have that right. So it's like, if you if you believe in God, let's say that's for example. If you believe in God, if you're a religious and you're watching this and you believe in God. Or you're, or you're religious or you're spiritual, whatever it is. Except when you hear that from someone that you're going to get damned. Except for going like and just believing them and be like, oh, I'm going to hell. Because I can't believe in God anymore. Um, or I can't believe in whoever I believe in. But I'm talking about Christianity, Christianity right now. Uh, except for thinking that, it's like if you feel comfortable with it and you like this kind of thing and you think this kind of thing is interesting, like I kind of think it's interesting. I kind of like hearing about like uh, spirits and ghosts and about like talking to Gabriel or talking to and to gods. I think that's interesting and people's journeys with it. I think is interesting. So if you think it's interesting, if you're like me, if you're Wiccan or or whatever, you think this stuff is interesting. Except for going to this person, negative person in your life, is making you feel like you're being chastised for being gay or transgender. And instead, go to whoever your guardian is. And the guardian doesn't have to be specific. It can be an archangel, uh, like Gabriel, or it can just be of whatever religion you're from. Or if you're atheist, it could be like a person of the of you purely trust and that you trust the wisdom of like if you have someone in your life who's saying i accept you for you and i want your happiness then that's gonna be 
you're the person to look at versus looking at the person who's telling you you're damn because they don't have the right to say what they're saying. If that makes sense. I think that makes sense. So just, and the more knowledgeable you are when it comes to this kind of thing, and the more you understand yourself, and the more you like find that person that can guide you, whether that be real person, like in, in this world, or spiritual, or whoever, it's like the more knowledgeable you are, the more you can combat these negative feelings. Because what's important is that you're happy and that you make other people happy and you want the best for other people rather than that's more important to some to like spirituality I'm saying spirituality because the moment i say god that makes it seem like it's only christianity and catholic and it also makes my source book so i'm gonna say spirituality the what's important to spirituality is just uh happiness and wanting others to be happy and if you feel like you try to make other people happy then you're fine you're fine. You're really not going to get, like, damned or whatever. Um, if that makes sense. See, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, a lot of this stuff. Um, and I know it sounds really hocus pocus -y. Um, Because this has been a weird week for me. I really don't know what to think. Because I, I really, truly, 100%, 200% with athe atheists. But this year has been so strange that I am not sure what I think anymore. I'm kind of stumped because it has been so strange. And and a big time non-believer, but there's been such weird things that I can't explain that I'm like, well, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's kind of a scratching of the head. Um, I don't know. I mean, I can, and, and for anybody who thinks this kind of thing is interesting or cool or fascinating or whatever, uh, I could read Nikki's story. I wrote it down. But, um, I just think it's kind of spooky. It's kind of, I don't think Nikki intends it to be spooky. But, um, it's kind of spooky. A little bit, it's a little bit spooky. Uh, especially since the way she died was really tragic and really sad. Um,. I guess, but yeah, I guess I'm going to leave it here. My house is haunted, and it was a turn out to be Trickster Spirit, and he's not allowed in my apartment anymore. And yeah, I don't know. It's been a weird week. So I guess I'm going to post this and I guess see what happens. Anyway, I'll see you guys later on another episode of the Granny Joe Show. Hello guys, if you like this video, please consider checking out my game Vacant. It's free right now off of Itch.io and Early Access. I would really love to hear your guys' feedback and comments and all that jazz. The link will be in the description if you want to see more.